So with the coronavirus now being declared a pandemic by the World Health Organization and the administration taking some steps that frankly should have been taken some time ago, people have a lot of questions about the process for getting to a vaccine. There will be a vaccine. The question is, as we sit here in March of 2020, when will it be available? The best we can say is that uh, hopefully by sometime in early 2021, maybe a little earlier given the advances in our technology. So what happens? How do you actually get to a vaccine? In a normal situation, you'd want to start with animals before you m move to human safety testing. In this case, it looks as though we're going to have to move to human safety testing in parallel with animal testing. What happens in human safety testing, and it's already happening as I speak in Seattle with a few dozen healthy, normal people who are fully informed and in fact are getting compensated for their time, what happens is you're trying to see if the formulation you've got is safe. That's the first step, it has to be safe. The next question is, is it effective? Now you can, in a variety of ways, you can see if it's effective. One way to do that is what are called challenge studies. You give somebody the vaccination and then you actually expose them to the virus and see how they respond. And of course, you're ready at a moment's notice to come in with the therapeutics if they do get sick. One of the great advantages of the internet is that it has allowed scientists to share information digitally instantly. So you don't have to wait if you're in a lab on the other side of the world. The problem is right now that even before the epidemic, we have a trust gap. We already had people mistrusting scientists in other parts of the world, particularly Asia. We just can't function that way. We have to be able to trust each other. Now you've got the vaccine, now you've got to get it manufactured and you've got to get it disseminated to millions and millions of people. So at the moment, manufacturers need to be looking at and are looking at how they can produce great quantities of the vaccine. Here's an irony on our current situation. We don't have that production capacity in this country. Where is it? It's mostly in China. So we are going to be getting millions and millions, we hope, of doses of vaccine from China in the next eight or 10 or 12 months as soon as we have the formula of the vaccine. But then you have to get it to places where people can be prioritized who need it. So who would those people be? First responders, healthcare professionals, people on the front lines, they need to be protected. We may need our military people to be vaccinated early because I wouldn't be surprised if the Defense Department starts standing up hospitals and clinics the way that was done in Liberia in 2014 in the outbreak of Ebola when we sent people and assets there through the army. We may be doing that in public spaces in this country to get the vaccine delivered to those people. You haven't seen the military do that in quantity in this country since the Civil War. This is going to be a very difficult period and we as Americans are going to have to as we're learning, change our behavior. We are being reminded that we are biological creatures, and that's an important lesson to learn. It will and already has come at a heavy cost, not only in terms of illness and fear and panic and anxiety, also lives. We are going to be changed by this experience. Public health people, people have been warning about this for decades. Government has stood up public health systems and then taken money out of them. We can't do that anymore. The world is different. We'll be better off for it, but it is going to be tough.